here at the beginning as a foundation. Genesis 3, verses 4 and 5. Let's read. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You may be seated. Holy Lord, we do pray for understanding, but not the devil's way, Lord. We do thank you for the revelation of the Scriptures. We know the devil's a liar. And I pray, Father, that you put a hedge about us, but I do pray that we will be diligent to preach from the housetops and expose and get in the way of the agenda of the devil and the Antichrist that is coming and the Antichrist spirit that we know is already present. Be with your people today. Bless us, Father. Thank you for your goodness and your grace. In Jesus' holy name, amen. The Martians and the virus removing the veil. We need some veils removed, don't we? I tell you. Uh, I'm going to call your attention today to a few verses, and they're going to serve as a foundation. So you can discern what's going on all around you in this day and age. And also, you can discern what is coming. There are two edges of the devil's sword. You might say his forked tongue. In the verse before us, you see the false hope. That's one side of the devil's agenda, to give you false hope. You shall not surely die. That's a false hope. If you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're going to lake a fire for all eternity. There's no reincarnation. And then he says, God doth know, implying that God's bad and that he's holding something back from you. That if you'll sin against God, your eyes shall be opened. If you go against that Bible, go against God's word, your eyes will be open. you'll be as gods. That's false hope. That's the false peace and hope that the devil brings you. But he also seeks with the other side of the sword or his tongue, he has fear and terror that he wants you to be afraid of not doing what he tells you to do. But I want you to know that the Bible tells us for sure that God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. Do not let the devil terrorize you. Do not let the devil scare you into stupidity and sin. Now, we're going to expose the agenda further, but I just want you to understand Godhood and being afraid of missing something, being afraid of whatever terror the devil brings you. You must be aware of these things. But now I want to go back to the root of things. Because God tells us, and I've been doing this ever since I became a preacher. We try to go back to the root of things. It says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So every year, so to speak, it seems to get worse and worse with this deception. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. Know what you believe and know that it comes from our King James Bible. Amen. Know that it's from the Holy Scriptures. Knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Meaning, if it's not upon the Bible, if it's not rooted in the Bible, what is it rooted in? I'm going to tell you, if it's not rooted in the Bible, it's going to be rooted in devils. It's going to be rooted in devils, whether it's psychology, whether it's 12-step programs, no matter what you begin to study, and you find this stuff goes back to devils. It goes back to automatic writing and that type of thing. So we want to expose Satan's agenda. Why do we want to expose Satan's agenda? What is this Martian thing all about? What is this UFO thing all about? We must expose where these things come from. I assure you, they come from the devil. And there's a time coming in 2 Thessalonians 2 where the devil's son, so to speak, the son of perdition, what we call the Antichrist, is coming. 
He is coming, and it says, even him who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. It's going to be unbelievable how people will see these so-called miracles, and they will follow him because of his power that he has. But not only his power, he's going to promise something. He's going to promise something. They're going to think he's from outer space. They're going to believe that he is whatever lie you want to adopt. That, that he's a reincarnation of some Christ spirit of Buddha or whatever it is. But they're going to say he came down from outer space and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, delusion that they should believe a lie. There is a lie coming. It's already here. It's been manifested before I was born. That lie is that you can save yourself that you can redeem yourself, that you can be God, that we can be as gods. We have this Darwinian demonic evolution that says you just keep getting better and better and better and better, whatever that means, pro progressing, progressing to higher forms. So they say that just as you came from a monkey and you became a man, soon you will be a god and it'll be through a quantum leap. And the Antichrist is going to come to show you how to achieve that next step in earth's evolution, so to speak. Now, the Bible says over here in 2 Thessalonians, I want you to remember this. It says in chapter 2 that you need to get in the way of this, that he that letteth will let till he be taken out of the way. So your job right now is to run interference. Your job is to get in the way of this until God says, okay, enough's enough, let's go. And he begins to bring all of this to pass. And lets the devil have uh, his time, his time. Now, just to explain what this delusion is going to be, this lie of the Antichrist, we've already seen it in Genesis 3. He's not going to change. It's going to be that you shall be as gods. But just so you see the connection of how this all comes together, we can see how Satan's already been doing this. He's already been doing this when he fell. And he led away some angels and others. And we see Isaiah 14. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? This is what he's going to do again. You could look at this not only as past. You can look at this as a future prophecy of what the devil through the Antichrist is going to do. He's going to weaken the nations. How is he weakening? weakening the nations. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. What do we have here? The original promise of Godhood that he gave to Eve, that he's given to everybody today, that the Martians are going to give you, that you shall be as gods, and that you can ascend up there to outer space, and that you can populate a planet's you know, a bunch of stars, I guess. Uh, th th these people, uh, th they don't understand words. They don't understand the Bible. But they believe you're going to get up there and you're going to populate outer space. And we're going to have these Martians, these aliens that are going to come bring to you this knowledge, the keys. So you can be a god. It's the old lie. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. I, I mean, it goes right back to the beginning. Let's look at the foundation here. Genesis 11. And they said, go to... Now watch this. Let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. You know, you see that uh, United Nations, uh, uh, Europe, United Nations of Europe, and you see the, the Tower of Babel there, you know, and they're completing it and bringing this thing back just to spite God. I tell you what. Notice, they're going to, whose top may reach unto heaven. There it is again. Let us make us a name. Now notice lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. Now what you have before you is this, an international emergency with the hope of Godhood. For protection, we must have a world government. We, must we, we don't know what's coming. Whatever terror that they want to bring before you, they give you a false hope, and they give you the terror. You have an international emergency. You must come together, and we must focus on outer space, so-called. The Lord's not pleased. 
He divided the nations into nations as protection so man might seek after God. The one world government weakens the nations. It produces more rebellion, not less. There are international emergencies today that are being put before you. And people are running to form this one world government and hate whatever they say to hate. Our God tells us in Psalms 115, the heaven. Oh, but he goes on. Even the heavens, plural. That at least includes the third heaven and the second heaven. The heavens are the Lord's. But the earth hath he given to the children of men. Well, I know the Lord owns the earth. So what is he saying here? He's saying there's a special way in which the heavens, plural, are my domain. You have the earth as your domain. So we must resist this Luciferic, satanic spirit to go up and populate outer space and all of their wicked, alien delusions. We know the 20th century has been fixated upon outer space. We have books, movies, television. All of them are tools of propaganda. And they've been stressing aliens from other planets from the time you were a child, before you were born, many of you, most, or everybody. This has been going on since the 19th century. Actually, it goes way, way back. Uh, we won't get into that. You know, we need to hold fast the form of sound words, first of all. People say, do you believe on life? Do you believe there's life on other planets? What do you mean other planets? Uh, in the Bible, uh, it uses the word planet for stars. The word planet means wandering stars. The Bible never says the earth is a star. The Bible never says the earth is a wandering star. What's interesting is our Lord came down from heaven. Isn't that interesting? Think about that. He entered into our world. He came down from heaven. And He will come again from heaven. So I want you to get this straight. Way, 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 way up in the sky, the Lord is coming to invade this earth. He's already come one time. And He's going to come again. So when you think about this, when you think about this, you have people out there. They will not believe the Lord created the earth and that the God of the Bible and the Lord Jesus Christ came down from heaven, became a man, and died for the sins of mankind, and He's going to come again to judge the earth. They will not believe that but they are fascinated with the idea that aliens come down from the sky and Robert Jastrow of NASA, you know, all these people, uh, th th that somehow or another they laid eggs. They laid eggs and that's where man came from. And they're going to come back again. But they believe they're educated. They believe they're smart. They're wise. The Bible says the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. The Bible says that there are angels, creatures that invade this world, devils that are evil, and many angels that are good. There have been books written where observers have noticed that more and more alien films are having the idea of an alien messiah, this alien that comes to redeem humanity. But see, it's not our Lord Jesus Christ dying for the sins of the world. It's knowledge, see, that you shall be as gods if you'll just do what I tell you to do. However, others point out that an evil alien keeps popping up in movies too. 
and that you have these good Messiah aliens, and then you have this evil aliens, a context plot in various films. And I'm going to tell you right now, Satan is using both of these models. He's using both of them. He wants you to believe there are good, advanced aliens that will help you adapt to what's coming and help you survive if you'll come together as one and do exactly what he says. And I'm going to show you what those things are going to be. But they also want you to believe that there are some evil aliens out there and you must be careful because they're going to destroy mankind. Who are those evil aliens? I believe you can see in Revelation chapter 11. That two men are coming down here. And it says, when they shall have finished their testimony. And that testimony is not good. Because it says that you children ought to turn your hearts to your fathers. And other things like that. And I tell you, they're not going to like to hear that testimony. And uh, they're going to try to kill them. But they cannot kill them. You're talking about war of the world. You're talking about, you're going to have two men no matter what you do to them. You cannot kill them and they could cause fire to come down and kill you. And you you talk about an attack. You talk about CNN. This is an amazing thing that the world's going to be focused on. But hold on. The beast that comes down from Mars. Oh, no, 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 no. The Lord Jesus came down from heaven. He came down from heaven. But no, no, no. This, the Bible lays it wide open. This alien Messiah that they're going to receive, I'll tell you where he comes from. The beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit, see, shall make war against them. These are two aliens fighting one another. Not that Moses and Elijah are aliens, but that's what the world's going to think, see. And they shall kill them. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because the two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. So what's going to happen? You know, the whole world, the whole world now is going to worship the good alien, the good alien that saved mankind. Wow. What are they going to do? It says Revelation 13 and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. You're going to know. You're going to know. You're going to know where he came from. You're going to know, no, he came from below. He came from below. He's of his father, the devil. Oh, you you imagine how horrible that's going to sound? When you're calling this great alien Messiah, and you're saying he came from down, not up, buddy. Wow. Even him, says Thessalonians, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Wow. Folks, the world has nurtured the propaganda. Those that know what's happening. The world has been nurtured to be ready for these final days. Because it's all going to climax in one battle where this beast from hell gathers the world together, all the nations of the world, and there is a war because we are invaded. Not we, they, uh, but, but this earth is invaded by what they think is an alien with UFOs like you've never seen before. It says in Revelation 19, and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war. Uh, you're talking about space force. You're talking about military equipment. You're talking about everything they have to muster. They're going to make war against him that sat on the horse? A flying UFO horse? And against his army. The Bible says the armies in heaven have followed him on horses. Wow. This is amazing stuff. So you talk about UFOs. Yeah, you keep looking. There's going to be horses that are going to be up there, and they're going to come, and it's going to be a city with him. I believe a whole mountain's coming. I believe they're going to look up there and say, oh, man, something is coming like you would not believe. And, hey, fight! This is the alien attack. Oh, God help us. Hey, you want to be with the Lord on this day. The Bible says they that are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. Faithful. Oh, Lord, I want to be part of that number, right? We're saved in eternity by the grace of God through faith alone, 
but you reign in the kingdom. If you suffer, you shall reign. You want to be part of this kingdom reign. Now let's take a moment to see where we are today. You know there's been propaganda been going on. I grew up in it. Uh, you did too. I hated Star Trek. I, I never had Star, Star Trek pajamas or anything. I did not understand that show. It was weird to me. But I like Lost in Space and all that other stuff. And uh, uh, I shared with you before, uh, for school district, my school district, I, I won a, a award for writing, Does R Stand for Real, in like fourth grade. And I want you to think about this for a minute. Two boys were camping. They were abducted by aliens. And I drew the aliens in the pictures and everything. It looks just like these aliens, of course. And uh, all these experiments occurred on the two boys. And they woke up the next day and they said that had to be a dream. But they do remember getting an R tattoo when they were in the spaceship. And so they woke up and they said, okay, I think that was a dream, but why do I have this tattoo upon my arm? So the title of the book was Does R Stand for Real? Uh, very creepy when you think about vaccinations and the mark of the beast and all of these things that are coming together now. So, you know, this is what was in my brain. And I want you to see, this is what's in the brain of the average person today to varying degrees. So let's see how things are really taking off now. Here's headline. It would be impossible to pull the plug on superintelligent machine that wanted to control the world and harm humans, scientists warned in a paper on the development of AI. That's not aliens per se, but it all is pretty much merging together. Superintelligence, you know. You're going to be like a god. Uh, and they say this thing finally takes off. So whether the image of the beast is some AI thing or whatever, it's just all coming together. But I won't get too long-winded here. Scientific American, just the other day, says two th uh, two 2020 has been a doozy of a year, a weird, horrifying branch of the human timeline that has so often felt like it was an alternate reality. Why not add the discovery of other technological life to the mix? For that matter, why shouldn't that discovery just sneak up on us in a comparatively ordinary fashion? A leaked bit of news, a preliminary discussion from the scientist, and then, lo and behold, it's basically all over. And the fact of a populated galaxy just becomes another piece of history, all because of a monotone carrier wave signal. So they're concentrating right now on some radio wave or something that they hear, and they're saying, you know what, one day we're just going to wake up, they're going to like, yes, there, there, there's aliens out there. And... Uh, in some ways, they might just even be letting you know this is coming because this is the plan. Uh, let's see. Mystery Wire tells us three years ago this week, the New York Times posted a story on its website that is still reverberating through UFO circles and government agencies. The report revealed the existence of a program called AATIP, Advanced Aerospace Threat identification program. There it is. And it put a video into the public eye 13 years after an encounter with a UFO was captured during a military mission. But it was the report that the government spent $22 million studying UFOs. Since the report, media attention to the UFO topic has gained a foothold in mainstream reporting. So you're going to see more and more reporting on UFOs, and this stuff's starting to be taken seriously. They're saying we've taken a step now to where this is no longer just, you know, laughing and movies. This is starting to get serious, is what they're saying. It's starting to get serious. Oh, there's something. Children, these are devils, okay? It's, it's either fake or military stuff, or they're devils, okay? There's no creatures other than devils and angels. There's nobody that dwells up in stars and, and, and that type of thing. Uh, here's a headline. Open talk of UFOs on the horizon for more lawmakers. Okay, they're starting to talk about it more. And then, you want to get really crazy, NBC News reports uh, that former Israeli, now who is this fella? A former Israeli monk in the desert? No. Former Israeli space security chief. Well, I guess, I guess that's about the same as uh, Psycho in the Desert. Uh, says extraterrestrials exist, and Trump knows about it. A galactic federation has been waiting for humans to reach a stage where we will understand what space and spaceships are, says Haim 
Ishad. A former Israeli space security chief has sent eyebrows shooting heavenward by saying the Earthlings have been in contact already with extraterrestrials. Uh, terrestrials. The unidentified flying objects have asked not to publish that they are here. Humanity is not ready yet. Wow, he was the head of Israel's Defense Ministries Space Directorate. Um, folks, the devil's priming you. The devil's priming you. He's getting you ready. Oh, man, it's coming full steam ahead. The CIA released thousands of UFO documents online. Let's see, we're about running out of time, folks. You understand, we're running out of time on this 6,000-year thing. This stuff is starting to, to hurry along as the virgins sleep, so to speak. See, The CIA released thousands of UFO documents online. Here's how to read them. So people are going to be combing through those things. Um, a Harvard professor says an alien visited in 2017 and more are coming. You're starting to get the professors and these others. Uh, New York Post, that was just the other day. Um, uh, the first British person, female, to go into space said she believes aliens are real and they may already be among us. Um uh, yeah, there are some aliens probably already among us, but they come from below. Some of them are the spirits of the air, I reckon, uh, um, for sure. Uh, USA Today says legendary NASA astronaut Neil Armstrong believed in alien life, his son has revealed. He didn't admit to believing in God, but he did believe in alien life forms. I've documented before the amazing degree of 33rd degree Masons that are involved in NASA. Um, Military.com, uh, here's NASA UFO sighting. What did Buzz Aldrin see on Apollo 11? He's been told not to talk about it. Um, Navy astronaut and six man on the moon, Edgar Mitchell, believed in alien intervention. He believed aliens averted a nuclear war. But he also claimed that top military officials had hidden evidence of UFOs, potentially alien spacecraft. They're just fascinated with it, aren't they? Well, now that COVID has hit, UFO spotting has replaced bird watching as pandemic obsession. You want to see something really strange? Watch this. The combined COVID-19 relief and federal spending bill passed late last year includes an unusual request. U.S. intelligence agencies have 180 days to tell Congress what they know about unidentified aerial phenomena or UFOs. Now, what does a virus relief bill have to do with UFOs and aliens? Now, the connection is actually surprising because there is a connection between the two. We, we might paraphrase this. What does Martians have to do with a virus? So that's why I titled the sermon, The Martians and the Virus. Why, why, are, why are you trying to find Martians in a bill dealing with a virus? I believe that when we go back to the foundations, you're going to see that this Martian stuff, even though it goes back to the Garden of Eden and all throughout the ages, it really began to gain steam with Madame Blavatsky and Theosophy and the Theosophists with their automatic writing. And then Spiritism was born all around the world uh, or, or revived and everybody was into the seances and hearing from uh, uh, talking to ghosts and talking to the dead and necromancy. And as you read some of their... Uh, material and some of the magazines of that time, like Borderland in 1897, uh, they claim a medium was speaking and they're going to tell you what life is like on Mars and what the Martians are like. And, uh, and of course, it's the same slop. Th these devil-possessed mediums, pretending to have aliens speaking through them, began to say that Martians are also into spiritualism. They, 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 they do the same occult rituals, you see. And guess what now? Listen, this is going to come together. They have no ownership. They believe private ownership is bad. Now, you just take, take a second now. I want you to think about this now just for a second. 
Think about it. They don't eat meat except for fish every now and then. They use no money. They are socialist. Okay. Why did the devil tell you that these advanced aliens, so-called, are into spiritualism? They don't use money. They're socialists. You kids are trying to understand what that means. Basically, communism, socialism is you have nothing that you own per se, but the government feeds you and takes care of you, see. So in 1898, it began. H.G. Wells, War of the World, wrote his book. Who is H.G. Wells? He wrote a book about the earth being invaded by Martians, who wear no clothes, by the way. But hold on. Because the Martians are advanced, he foresaw a world where people stop using their arms and legs, and so your head gets really, really big, but everything else gets kind of spongy and weak. See? Basically, your arms begin to deteriorate. You know that's already starting to happen? As young men, remember I told you before that not long ago, just a, a generation before, uh, the average woman had a stronger grip than today's 19-year-old man? Absolute truth. See, as you put these kids in front of the Internet and computers, they're deteriorating. Their bodies are deteriorating. And their head's getting real big, too, in the wrong way. Yes, indeed. Don't go around and measure heads. I'm talking about their boasting. They're, they're getting full of arrogance, you know. They're heady, says the Bible. Heady. They become octopuses is what basically H.G. Wells says. A bunch of octopuses, you know. Now, who was H.G. Wells? This is going to tell you a lot. He was Darwinian, which means he believed in evolution. He was an outspoken socialist, which means we want to get rid of private property and everybody share and we'll have the elite control everything, you know. In 1891, right before he wrote A, a, a War on the World, War, War of the Worlds, uh, in 1891 he married his cousin. But then after he was married to her, he fell in love with a student and decided to live together in fornication and adultery with her. He had numerous affairs, uh, adultery, because see, that's what the spiritists were telling you. That's what the mediums were telling you. Get rid of marriage. There is no marriage. So he was, he was just walking in this demonic teaching that was prevalent at the time that got really big in the 1960s with the free love, you know, revolution, so to speak. He had many affairs and children even with feminists. And until his death, understand it, it's going to come together, he had a love affair until his death with Margaret Sanger of Planned Parenthood, eugenics, abortion, founder, cut her hair, put on pants, called her magazine, The Woman Rebel, and said, you know what, we've got to sterilize everybody for the sake of evolution. We got to sterilize everybody that we we believe is undesirable, you know. Well, by the time he was 40 years old, Wells had wider influence than any other English writer. So without if you don't understand Wells, it's going to be hard to understand what happened to America. See, if you don't understand Wells and Margaret Sanger, you can't understand what's going on. You know, with the Bible is all we need, but, but, but we're looking in our world with the light of the Bible and we're seeing what these devils have done and the deceptions that they've brought. The Bible says, know of whom you've learned them. No, if these things didn't come from the Bible, where did they come from? And that's what we're doing right now. He was an atheist. In God, the Invisible King that he wrote in 1917, Wells wrote that his idea of God did not draw upon the traditional religions of the world, and he basically said he was an atheist. Now, instead of trying to pick apart his book, let me tell you what happens, and then I'm going to let Wells explain his books. Martians invade the world with these tripods, and 
Nothing that man can do can stop the invasion of the Martians. But finally, when all looks lost, the Martians get defeated by microbes. And the microbes kill the Martians, and it saves the day. Bacteria, virus. Okay. Now, you think that out for a second. What is he trying to say? Let's go to a book that he wrote. Oh, here, here is a fake radio war stirs terror throughout the U.S. That's in 1938, where people really thought that the Martians had landed when they were reading. Boy, talk about a test of terror, you know, kind of just a dry run just to see using the radio. Imagine if you use TV and video. What could you convince the world of if you show them on video? This was radio. Many were convinced that we were invaded by Martians. What will dumb Americans do if you give them video? What would they believe? Wow. Man, oh, man. Well, let's see. Ah, here it is. 1928, the open conspiracy. I've shared a little bit of this with you in the past, but it's time to uh, take another look at it. H.G. Wells wrote The Open Conspiracy, Blueprints for a World Revolution. Now, what is H.G. Wells telling us in open conspiracy. You know what he's saying? He's saying, I'm just going to open it up right now. I'm going to take the veil off of everything so you can see it. So there's no excuse for us not understanding what's happening. Let's see. He says this book is a scheme. A scheme to thrust forward and, est and establish a human control over the destinies of life and liberate it from its present dangers, uncertainties, and miseries. Okay, so there's going to be dangers. and You're going to be afraid. But this book's going to show you how to fix it. It's going to show you how to be saved from the dangers. Remember, they gathered together in the Tower of Babel because they were afraid. The book teaches that due to scientific progress, a common vision of a world politically, socially, and economically unified is emerging among educated and influential people. And that this will be the basis of a world revolution aiming at universal peace, universal welfare, and happy activity, whatever that is, that can result in the establishment of a world common wealth, and this will ultimately be a world religion. So H.G. Wells says, now this is what's going to happen. We are working with some educated people, and we are going to bring in a world government, and we're going to use science to do it. And this world government will take care and save mankind. Okay, so basically we got the Tower of Babel all again, see. Very strange, he says it's going to be a world religion. This thing is a religion, meaning you must be devoted to it. The task of the open conspiracy is propaganda, he says. He says, if you are an open conspirator involved in this with me, we must use propaganda. He was a skilled propagandist, by the way. We're going to use propaganda to bring the cattle toward world government. Folks, just because H.G. Wells is dead, his ideas aren't dead. The plan isn't dead. Satan isn't dead. This thing is coming into focus, and it is forming right now. But let's just get a little more idea of what these men and women are bringing you. He says the first thing we'll use is propaganda. But at the point when we get to a place where propaganda no longer works, we will use bloodshed, and there may be a lot of blood. We're going to shed blood to bring forth this world revolution. You can read The Aquarian Conspiracy by Ferguson. 
where she goes through and says, why do you know there's new age people in the government, in, in, in science, in every field, and we're all working together for this world government to bring forth the new age Messiah See. He tells us that religion is the subordination of you, of self. And therefore, if you are going to worship and be involved in this new religion of the one world government, you must be subordinated. Your identity must be subordinated. I understand now. See. Basically, you must be devoted religiously to the new world order. He says there will be resistance. False loyalties, false standards of honor, false religious associations, and they are the vestiges of the ancient order with which there can be no compromise. You know, I see things like that, and I want to get me V-O-T-A-O, vestiges of the ancient order, you know, but it sounds like a mason or something. You know, that's what I am. I'm one of them. But what he's saying is basically the King James Bible is getting in the way. Remember the Satanists that said we've been trying to destroy the King James Bible because it's in our way? Uh, he's saying that conservative, old path, traditional religious worldview, these things are in the way. Okay, now you got to think about this for a second. What is the enemy? What is the enemy? Anybody that holds to the old order in the old ways, you are the enemy. You are the resistance. Now, what did he tell us in Thessalonians? He said, get in the way. He that letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. God says you are the resistance. God said you are to get in the way of this spirit, of this one world government. This new religion. He says the determination to replace private, local, or national ownership of at least credit, transport, and staple production by a responsible world dictorate. The practical recognition of the necessity for world biological controls. For example, a population and disease. Okay, he just told you two things. We're getting rid of private ownership. And number two, we need a world biological control system. The supreme duty of subordinating the personal life to the creation of a world government capable of these tasks and to the general advancement of human knowledge, capacity, and power. Okay. So he told us three things here. We must take over Medicine, mating, population control. It must be in the hands of a supreme government. There can be no private ownership. And the people must be led to make this world government their religion. See? So he's not shy to tell you, this is my religion. Now, don't miss what he's about to say. This book states as plainly and clearly as possible the essential ideas of my life. My other writings, with hardly an exception, explore, try over, illuminate, comment upon, or flower out of the essential matter that I here attempt at least to strip bare to its foundations. What is he saying? He says, you can go back and read War, War of the Worlds and you'll understand what I'm saying here. You'll understand what I'm saying here. That was his mo one of his most popular books. Of course, he's telling you, I'm telling you right now what War of the Worlds meant. I want you to mark that. He tells us again that he has one main enemy that he must destroy. The conspiracy and the propaganda must destroy it. End the nation state forever and replace it with a world government run by the elite. 
Okay. He says we have one main goal. Traditional religion and traditional nation states. They're going to get in the way. Nationalism gets in the way of one worldism, you understand. Well, you can really understand some things. Because when you start having a revival in America of nationalism, that is a nightmare to people who have an agenda. They've made so much progress toward world government. And then to have that thing take a back seat, wow. Don't you be confused to where you somehow or another think of nationalism as racism. There can be people that adopt those types of attitudes, but you'll never see anything more racist and more hurtful to mankind than these one-worlders. I'll prove it to you in a second. Don't, 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 don't buy the Kool-Aid. Don't drink the Kool-Aid that they're trying to give you, okay? The means to be used for this one world population control is science, he says. Eugenics, sterilization, birth control, total economic control of all credit generation, of all distribution of economic staples needed for human survival, food, water, shelter. They must control everything. He says the open conspiracy turns to biology for the regulation of quantity and controlled distribution of human population of the world. And without this degree of control, the human race is doomed. Man is a malicious animal, he says. So therefore, his new religion has six basic essential requirements. Understand that all existing governments are provisional in nature. Resolve to minimize all of their little conflicts. The determination to replace private, local, or national ownership. The practical recognition of the necessity for world biological control. We've seen that. The support of a minimum standard of individual welfare in the world. So, you know, you got to have a minimum wage. you got to have a basic income for everybody. The supreme duty of subordinating the personal life to the creation of a world government. Well, says American industries no longer have any practical justification for protection. We would be happier without it. We'd be happier without it. Conspirators who would operate within their national settings on behalf of the global subversion of all nation states no matter what nation they're in, they are to work toward the subversion of nationalism. And they are to work toward the scientific depopulation of the darker skinned races of the planet. And the establishment of a one world domination. You know what's interesting? You say, well, we've left that at least. We've left this. So, so the white supremacists are, are the nationalist? Nation states? That's white supreme. What, what about the people that are in control of the one, gov one, one world government agenda? See? Well, let me ask you a question. He said abortion will be used. Abortion will be used. Who is the ones that are suffering from the abortion genocide in America the most? Go to CDC right now. Blacks are the highest. Hispanics are next in line. Other non-whites are next. And then whites. So you're telling me the whole democratic, one-world socialist agenda is the thing killing the non-white population? Just because you open borders and let people flood over here. What are they doing by diet to kill people? What are they doing by disease? I'm telling you, there are conspirators that are involved in H.G. Wells' open conspiracy, and just because they pretend to be your friend, they are not your friend. Right. I'm telling you. 
that just as the whore supports and rides the, she rides the beast and directs it, you learn that the ten kings hate her and burn her with fire. So you could almost say that when women allow themselves to be play the victim in this way and be used by these wicked people, it's not going to lead to anything good for you. And it goes for any race or any people on this earth. If you allow these people to use you and let you play the victim and you believe they're your friends, they are not your friends. They are leading toward a one world government of who they say is elite. And you either get involved with it or you die. Who's dying proportionately more in regard to COVID? Members of minority, racial, and ethnic groups are disproportionately represented among COVID-associated deaths. The elderly. Somebody's in control of things. Telling you who the enemy is. And when you put all this together, when you put this all together, here's what I believe H.G. Wells was saying. I believe he was saying that Martians are coming, an enemy of mankind. Who are the Martians? He says, well, I tell you in open conspiracy who the Martians are. There anybody that believes in the traditional religion, the traditional view of God, and the traditional view of nations. You are the Martians. You are the ones in the way. You are the ones destroying mankind. And you must be eradicated. Oh, but how's he going to eradicate you? How's he going to eradicate the Martians? What do the Martians die of? They die of a virus. See, Tom Cruise, I didn't see the movie, but I read all about it. In 2005, he revived War of the Worlds. At the end of it, when the deplorables die, the Martians, and you find out that the microbes killed them, the whole point of the movie is they were not adaptable. Whoever is not adaptable cannot transition. The Martians were not able to adapt. Brother, are you not able to adapt to this new transgender, homosexual, GMO, uh, Franken-food, and and immoral, demonic utopia? Are you unable to adapt to new ways and new ideas? Then you're deplorable. You are a Martian. You are a bad alien. And you must be eradicated. How do they control the population? How do they control the population? Well, there was a man named Bertrand Russell who read Open Conspiracy. He says, I agree with every bit of it. I love the book. And Bertrand R- Russell said, by injections, by diet, and by injunction, we can bring forth the humanity that we want. He was just quoting H.G. Uh, Wells. We're going to use diet. We're going to use hormones. We're going to use injections in your arm. And we're going to use injunction, which is their laws. Wow. I've got so much to say about this, but I want to move on here. Martians invade mankind. Nothing can be done. What will save mankind? Only getting rid of the Martians. See, I believe this is dual. I believe this is dual. I believe it looks forward to a beautiful race that's coming, an evolutionary step of mankind, but you must also see the undesirables must be eradicated by the virus. The deadly virus saves humanity from destruction. H.G. Wells tells you who the Martians are. At the end of the book of War of the Worlds, notice what he says. In the larger design of the universe, this invasion from Mars is not without its ultimate benefit for men. It has robbed us of that serene confidence in the future, which is the most fruitful source of decadence. He's saying, I want you to understand 
that if we're to transition to our world government, there are some bad people in the way. And they must be eliminated. They must be eliminated. So you need to wake up, people, in open conspiracy. You've got to defeat with total control over medicine and disease. You must defeat with national, uh, uh, defeating, you must defeat nationalism. You must defeat private ownership. You must defeat traditional religion. You must defeat individualism. Now you can understand why they hate the King James Bible. It's in their way. Why they hate accountability. It's in their way. Why they hate natural health. It's in their way. You can understand why the control, the control of vaccines and such like. Now, what did the virus bring? It brought an elevation of medical authority like never before. Oh, you had to put up with Trump cussing them and and, and that type of thing. But now, supposedly, we're back to where he's going to elevate these great scientists and the medical leaders, you know, we're going to go back and join all of these one world government organizations. And we're going back to the agenda, the big picture, you know. But what did the virus bring? Whatever you think the virus is, just put that aside for a second. What did it bring? It brought injunction. It brought lockdown. Who did it hurt? Did it hurt Bill Gates? Did it hurt the the rich uh, leaders? Did it hurt? No, you know who it hurt? It hurt the middle class. So now everybody's saying, where's my stimulus check? So now we're moving toward universal income. See, we need another check. We have to have another check. I need another check because my business is now destroyed. What am I going to do? I don't have a business anymore. Uh Uh-oh. That was the whole goal. That was, I'll show you in a second. That was the whole goal, or part of the goal. Catherine Austin Fitz, who is she? Catherine Austin Fitz is an American investment banker and former public official, United States Assistant Secretary of Housing and Urban Development for Housing during the presidency of George H.W. Bush. So that's who Catherine Austin Fitz is. Basically, she says, what's going on right now? Just like the war on terror, this war on the virus is all about destroying the middle class. It's all about destroying business. It's all about a universal income that finally ends up with total control over your body and over your money. She's the author of the article, Injection Fraud, It's Not a Vaccine. She says the first and most important goal is the replacement of the existing U.S. dollar currency system used by the general population with a digital transaction system that can be combined with digital identification and tracking. The goal is to end currencies as we know them and replace them with an embedded credit card system that can be integrated with various forms of control potentially including mind control. Just as Gates installed an operating system in our computers, now the vision is to install an operating system in our bodies and use viruses to mandate an initial installation followed by regular updates. Accessing your body and my body on a 24-7 basis generates a lot of data. Now, I want you to understand, vaccines, why, why do it through a vaccine? Because you have the terror, you have the fear, But also, you have legal protection of vaccine manufacturers. If they wanted to come hook up equipment to you or inject things inside your body, and they didn't do it as a vaccine, now there's lawsuits. What's going to happen when all these things turn bad? What's going to happen if this doesn't work out? But vaccines, they're protected. They're protected. So you die, you fall into a convulsion, you you throw up blood, you you know, whatever happens to you, they are what? They are protected. So God help us. Now, when H.G. Wells wanted to fornicate and commit adultery, and some people rebuked him, 
He called him a bad name. It's a name that means the middle class. Remember Lenin. Whosoever conceives of the transition to socialism without the suppression of the bourgeoisie is not a socialist. It is essential to suppress them as a class. What, what, what is that? That's the middle class. So you cannot have socialism without getting rid of the middle class. Right at the same time you have socialists in the government, you now have COVID that is erasing the middle class, shutting down businesses all over America, causing everybody to be supported by universal basic income as you start getting afraid of what's coming next. What's coming next? There are dozens, scores of articles like this one from the New Yorker, how the coronavirus is killing the middle class. So, what I want you to understand is this. Yeah, one day they will bring aliens. The idea is for you to hope in godhood and be afraid of bad aliens. But the ultimate thing they want you to be afraid of. Remember back years ago when I showed you the Pope and world leaders everywhere, all the scientific men, they were all joining together to say the one thing that we have to be afraid of, the one thing that is, that is bad, that must be defeated is fundamentalism, see? So this is all coming together, which is somehow or another, for whatever reason, whatever motive, Trump revived a spirit of nationalism that just means we want America first. We want to think about our, our, our nation, not, not, not think about world government. We want to do what's good for our nation. We want to increase private ownership and the wealth of the middle class. I believe that that was such a nightmare that they have to institute what I believe has been a long time plan in the, in the works ever since. See, now, if you, if you turn to the news, it says the super COVID is now here. The super COVID. See, if you thought COVID was bad, what about the super coronavirus? See, more lockdowns, more destruction of the middle class, all leading toward digital income. And the whole time you think it's beautiful. You think it's wonderful. Everybody getting along. No more wars. Don't you dare believe that for a second. Don't you dare believe this satanic lie. Don't you believe this satanic lie. Don't you call me a white supremacist. I, I have a Cambodian. We, we have Hispanic. We have Chinese, black. Uh, what, what else is here? We have just about, and, and I've always had that from the very beginning. I believe that none of our heritage is, is worth anything compared to what God says. Amen? Amen. So, so, so if your native heritage or customs contradict with the Bible, throw it out. Amen? Amen. What's important is that Christian Bible that unites all of us in love and brotherhood. But this idea that you cannot in any way express or, or honor your heritage. What, what's wrong with diversity? What's wrong with diversity? Well, why does everything got to be pushing toward a one world government? I say get in the way of this trash. Get in the way. Become the Martian that they hate. You understand? Become the Martian and start standing up and rebuking it and resisting what they're trying to do to humanity. Expose what they've done with abortion. Expose what they're doing right now to the elderly uh, so they don't have to pay their social security. Expose what they're doing with this medical mafia that is is coming into control. Just as I've been exposing what they're doing through diet and hormones to cause you to be infertile and cause you to be weak. 
I say expose it all and stand up and get in the way and preach from the housetops and they're going to hate you more than you've ever been hated by anything. But the Lord says they really hate me. They really hate me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you, Father, for your goodness, Lord. Thank you, Father, for giving us the book that will split all of this wide open, Lord, and take the veil off. And I pray more people will stand up and expose it, Lord. I don't know what the answer is, Father. I do pray you'll raise up a magistrate. I do pray, Lord, that we'll be able to do what we can and to cry against it, Father. There will be persecution, as you have said, all that will live godly. We pray, Lord, that you lead us not into temptation, that we can live a quiet and peaceable life, Father. But we've been called to a responsibility to stand and get in the way of this Antichrist spirit and this coming of this Antichrist. Let us expose that beast from hell and expose this one world beast system and all of the magic and sorcery and death and destruction. Let us, Father, live a true, wonderful, ideal life of love, one for another, respecting and honoring our diversity but also knowing that we're made of one blood, Lord, and do, do a powerful thing, a wonderful thing, Lord, here in Long Run Baptist Church and churches all across America, Father. And uh, we thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen.